Hi guys, it is an unbelievably, spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times, in the former paradise of South Austin, Texas on this absolutely gorgeous Monday morning, I believe November 27th, 2017 where I think we're heading up pretty close to 80 degrees in Austin and uh, so the little Christmas elf and I, we need to head to the <clears throat> Christmas tree lot at the Austin Optimist Club so I can figure out how to turn on the hose and water down all of these drying up trees burning in the hot late November sun. But before I do that, since it is Monday morning, I'm going to do what I do every morning, Monday morning, and that's to bring you my economic meltdown round up round, where I simply go on the pages of the mainstream media to bring you more evidence of how the global industrial economy, otherwise known as the New World Order, is pulling out all the stops to bring down a planet. And I didn't even make it to the business pages today. This is just off the regular Rolodex of headlines on the main headlines this Monday morning. But before I dive into that, I just want to do a rare commercial endorsement here on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. I was doing the dishes today and I noticed I got my little plastic bottle of Dawn Ultra, Dawn Ultra with the little baby duck, and it says right here, Dawn helps save wildlife. Dawn Ultra, and the little plastic bottle, helps save wildlife. So if you want to save wildlife, I suggest you run out and buy Dawn Ultra, and I'm looking forward uh, to calling the 800 number in a future rant. We're going to call the 800 number and ask the question line, and we're going to ask, how does Dawn Ultra help save wildlife? But that will be a future adventure here on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. Right now, let me just dive in. Uh, you know, this economic meltdown roundup rant is getting a little unwieldy. So I'm just, I think I have 18 stories here today <clears throat> to get into them. Let me get the Sherlock the bear. This is, this bear is N.S. Sherlock is his name. Okay. Keystone's existing pipeline spills far more than predicted to regulators. Oh, shit, Sherlock. Wow. TransCanada Corporation's existing Keystone pipeline has leaked substantially more oil <coughs> and more often in the United States than indicated in risk assessments the company provided to regulators before the project began operating in 2010. No shit, the Canadian company, company is now seeking to expand its pipeline system linking Alberta's oil fields, otherwise known as tar sands bitumen fields, to U.S. refineries with its proposed Keystone XL project, which has President Donald Trump's backing. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, so the existing 2100 mile section of the pipeline uh, that's in operation already has had three significant leaks in the U.S. since it began operating in 2010, including the 5,000 barrel one uh, last week and two others, one in 2016 and one in 2011. 
Before constructing the pipeline, TransCanada provided a spill risk assessment to regulators, to regulators that estimated the chance of a leak of more than 50 barrels to be, quote, not more than once every 7 to 11 years over the entire length of the pipeline in the U.S. There you go. For South Dakota, where the line has leaked twice, the estimate was for a spill no more than once every 41 years. There you go. Uh, this is one of these, uh, some sort of regulator, some sort of pipeline regulator from South Dakota named Gary Hansen. They testified that this was going to be a state-of-the-art pipeline. We want to know. The pipeline is going to operate in a fashion that is safe and reliable. So far, it's not going well. No shit, Sherlock. The latest spill took place days before regulators in Nebraska approved a, approved a route for the pipeline through that state, lifting the last major regulatory hurdle for the expansion. There you go. Uh, TransCanada spill analysis uh, estimates, I guess it still does, estimates 2.2 leaks per decade with half of those at volumes of three barrels or less. It estimated that spills exceeding 1,000 barrels would occur at a rate of one time per Century. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Okay. Let's go from oil, from bitumen spills, not to toxic chemical spills. Well, spilling out of uh, sprayers. Hmm. Number of toxic chemicals applied to some vegetables has risen. 17-fold since the 1960s. No shit, Sherlock. The number of chemicals applied to supermarket vegetable crops has increased by up to 17-fold in 40 years, data shows, as the organic food industry and scientists have warned that <coughs> consumers are exposed to a toxic cocktail of pesticides. No shit, Sherlock. Yes, uh, and they were just looking at onions, leeks, wheat, and potatoes. Uh, the new report comes in despite industry data showing that the weight of pesticides applied in the UK has been halved since the 1990s. This is a brand new bullshit detector button. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Yes, uh, scientists warned that consuming tiny amounts of many different chemicals on a regular basis could be harmful, could be harmful to your health. Hmm. Consumption of these toxic cocktails of low levels of pesticide cocktails are thought to be linked with diseases like strokes, heart attacks, and cancer. Do you think so? Um, one of these uh, nutritionists, chemicals can have a mixture effect. They may have no effect by themselves, but when mixed have a pronounced effects. We are not just exposed to pesticides. We are exposed to a lot of chemicals acting together 
and we must take account of this cocktail effect affecting the same target audience that the pesticides are. Yes, there you go. Okay, from toxic pesticides to palm oil, making it into the mainstream media. Greenpeace slams Indonesian palm oil industry on deforestation. No shit, Sherlock. Greenpeace slammed Indonesia's palm oil industry Monday for failing to live up to its pledge to halt deforestation. That was bullshit. As the lucrative palm oil sector faces possible restrictions in Europe over environmental concerns. Palm oil is used in everything from soap to frozen pizza. But a consumer backlash has forced dozens of the world's largest food and drink manufacturers to address its ecological impact. Vast swaths of rainforest are destroyed to make way for palm oil plantations, threatening endangered species, and pushing indigenous people off their lands. International corporations, including Unilever and Kellogg's, have pledged to adopt environmentally friendly palm oil supply chains by 2020. But Greenpeace said in a report published this morning that large palm oil traders are failing on their commitment. No shit, Sherlock. There you go. Quoting Richard George uh, from Greenpeace. Quote, broadly the palm oil industry has agreed to end deforestation. The issue here, and it is a critical one, is that only two of the 11 traders we looked at were actually able to say when they are going to end deforestation. None of the firms contacted by AFP replied to requests for comment on the report. No shit, Sherlock. Okay. From palm oil to marijuana. The federal government just broke its medical marijuana promise. No shit. Few, if any, industries are growing at a quicker and more cons consistent pace in the U.S. than marijuana. Uh, one of these new studies found that U.S. the U.S. legal weed market is expected to grow by 45% next year and an aggregate of 300% between 2016 and 2021. If these projections are accurate, we could be talking about a $17 billion marijuana market, legal marijuana market, by 2021. With growth like this, it's no wonder why marijuana stocks have gone through the roof in recent years. But at the same time, the federal government has hardly adjusted its stance on marijuana. Today, the drug still remains a Schedule I substance at the federal level, meaning marijuana has no recognized medical benefits. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. And it is still deemed to be completely illegal right along LSD and heroin. This scheduling has made life difficult for marijuana 
based businesses, most are unable to access basic banking service services ranging from a line of credit or loan to something as simple as a checking account, that's because banks answer to the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, a federal entity. Since pot is still illegal at the federal level, it is always possible that banks could face money laundering charges or fines for providing financial services to pot businesses. So there you go. Anyway, uh, good luck on all of that from marijuana to class wars. Anybody uh, who does not understand the class war uh, in the United States and well, the rest of the planet <clears throat> Let's see what HuffPost is telling us this morning. Welcome to the class war. The United States has a problem. Oh, shit, the United States has a problem. There, there, there's the greatest opening sentence in HuffPost I've read in a while. Over the past decade, most of its families have been spinning their wheels. The median the median for all Americans, household income adjusted for inflation has grown by just one and a half percent or $839 since the beginning of the Great Recession, you know, in 2008. But over the same period, the total annual economic output of the United States has grown at 10 times that rate. The gains are even more impressive on the stock market, which has climbed about 40% adjusted for inflation. inflation. This is not due to the unique savvy, savvy of our investors. Business is just good. Corporate profits are booming, and the value of financial assets tied to those corporate profits is booming along with them. The experience of the past decade shows very clearly that trying to assuage the economic strains on the American middle and working classes by pumping up Wall Street only helps those people who already own a lot of financial capital. <laughs> and people who already own a lot of financial capital don't need help. <laughs> Half of all the gains from the sale of stocks and bonds accrue to households that make over one million dollars a year already. Less than one-fourth of American households own more than $25,000 in stock, and the 400 wealthiest households take about three-fourths of their very substantial annual incomes from their financial investments. <clears throat> so the tax legislation passed by House Republicans last week should not really be understood as economic policy making in any traditional sense. It is not about stimulating growth or investment or improving incentives. It is class war. Republicans are assisting the efforts of a very small, very rich faction to take an ever-growing share of the nation's wealth from the rest of us. No shit, Sherlock. Moving on, uh, well, the, the uh, Donald Trump's band of horsemen of the apocalypse is getting more and more horsewomen of the apocalypse and the latest candidate for horsewoman of the apocalypse 
is some clueless planet-eating bitch an attorney from Cheyenne, uh, Wyoming, named Karen Bud Phelan, uh, who is the newest candidate to lead an agency that oversees public lands totaling one-eighth of the United States, <clears throat> says environmentalists mischaracterize her as an advocate of signing those federal public landscapes over to state and local governments and private interest, when in fact, she says, she has no opinion on the issue. No shit, Sherlock. Bullshit detection. Take precautions. This is not, I'm not very happy with my new bullshit detector. Uh, but, and so what this story is all about is the small but growing movement in the West to wrest control of public lands from federal agencies. Uh, so who is this, uh, <clears throat> who is this? Uh, woman anyway. Uh, <clears throat> Bud Phelan's work helping local officials in Wyoming write land use plans have made her a lightning rod candidate to lead the BLM. Um, anyway, so they break about uh, Break this out, break this down. Yep. Anyway, uh, just, just add her to the goddamn list. Okay, from that, let's go down to Florida, where I will be going down to pretty soon. So what can I look forward to when I get to Florida? CSX train carrying harmful chemicals derails in Florida. A CSX Corporation freight train carrying hazardous molten sulfur derailed in central Florida this morning, prompting authorities to tell residents to stay indoors for several hours. <clears throat> no one was hurt in the accident. The train was traveling to Winston, Florida from Waycross, Georgia, when nine cars, including four with molten sulfur, went off the tracks in Lakeland. Uh, <clears throat> several of the derailed cars were reported to be lo leaking molten sulfur, which is used in making rubber, wildlife saving detergent, and fertilizers. Yes. Uh, molten sulfur, a highly flammable chemical with a faint odor of rotten eggs, can release poisonous gas such as hydrogen sulfide, which can be lethal to those exposed to it. Yes. The train was carrying a variety of other cargo as well, including cardboard, oats, and rocks. Okay. What is the news from Black Friday? It is Cyber Monday today. But let's take one last look back at Black Friday. The many stories, this is my favorite. More than 200,000 people try to buy a gun in Black Friday sales. Uh, figures show that over 200,000 people tried to buy a firearm in the U.S. on the day sales hit. Uh, there were 203,000 requests for instant gun back ground checks on Friday, a record for the most ever in 
one day. The figure represents a nearly 10% rise from last year and the latest figure does not necessarily represent the amount of guns which were actually sold on Friday. That figure could be much higher as buyers can purchase more than one firearm per check. Uh, it is full steam ahead for gun manufacturers, but of course now that was then, and today is, of course, Cyber Monday. And uh, we'll get back to the stats in a few days, but, of course, <clears throat> many versions of this story, Cyber Monday expected to break all online sales records. Yes, we should see a record-breaking uh, Cyber Monday today. <clears throat> but things looking good there and for gun owners, not looking so good for Christmas tree lot owners. Hmm, Christmas tree lots. What is going on in the Christmas tree business this year on Cyber Monday? Christmas tree lot owners say there is a shortage of real of real trees this year. Christmas tree lot owners are telling their customers to get their trees early this year because there is a national shortage of Christmas trees. I wish. Okay, from Christmas trees to condors. Condor Group wants to get more hunters to avoid lead bullets. Good luck on that. Uh, this is just the latest never-ending story about the single biggest threat to the California condor. And, and, and guys, this seems like this one should be so easy. So what happens is, uh, it, it, they're not shooting the condors directly. So these goddamn clueless fucking moron hunters go out there and buy all of these lead bullets, which could easily be outlawed if it was not for the National Rifle Association is the only reason the lobbyists for the NRA is the one reason that lead bullets are still legal. So these fucking hunters go out there and shoot everything from, you know, deer and elk or whatever, and the ones they don't manage to kill that uh, go off into the woods to die an agonizing, slow, painful death. And then the condors, which are giant buzzards, they come down to eat the animals that the hunters injured and never took home with them, they ingest the lead bullets and die of lead poisoning or it affects their eggs. Uh, and so all they can do is try to convince hunters to stop using the fucking lead bullets. You know, if we can't do something this simple, Jesus fucking Christ. Anyway, there is some good news, or maybe, here's from The Guardian. <clears throat> After marijuana are magic mushrooms next to be decriminalized in California, M mayoral candidate, um, let's see, well, let me, uh, okay. As California prepares for the legislation of recreational marijuana in 2018, one man is pushing for the state to become the first to decriminalize magic mushrooms. Kevin Saunders, a mayoral candidate for the city of Marina, just south of San Francisco, has filed a proposal that would exempt adults over the age of 21 from any penalties over possessing, growing, selling, or transporting psychedelic psilocybin 
mushrooms, quoting the uh, Mr. Saunders, quote, the world is really hurting and everybody is at a loss about what's going on right now with Trump, Brexit, the refugee crisis, and everything else. I'm at a loss at what to do politically, but the only thing I feel like we could do is get psilocybin mushrooms into more people's hands. Mushrooms deflate the ego and strip down your own walls and defenses and allow you to look at yourself in a different light. It could allow people to figure out what to do and could revolutionize the way we treat those with depression, addiction, and cluster headaches. And these are all excellent reasons why this man has zero chance. Magic mushrooms are a direct threat to everything, everything, the global industrial economy and the New World Order stands for. Since I took my first heroic dose of magic mushrooms in 2008, my carbon footprint has been reduced by over 90%. Uh, magic mushrooms are a, an enemy of the New World Order. Anyway, let's go from our own country, just a brief roundup of other companies. Let's go over there to China, a company you've probably never heard of, but came bigger than Facebook last week. A tech company barely known in the Western world, a briefly a Clips Facebook is one of the top five largest corporations on the planet. This is the Tencent Corporation, a 19-year-old company which now offers games and a WeChat messaging service hitting market capitalization value of just of right at $535 billion dollars last week, overtaking Facebook. Around 750 million Chinese internet users are flocking to online games, messaging apps, and <clears throat> online <coughs> shopping, propelling Tencent and Alibaba, another Chinese company, towards the top table of public listings. Ten cents new. Well, is it ten cent? Yeah, ten cents new landmark makes it the first company uh, in China to enter the so-called half a trillion club. Ten cent stock price has doubled in the last twelve months. <clears throat> there are more than one billion smartphones running in China and both tech companies, Tencent and Alibaba, generate most of their revenue from mobile. There you go. Um, okay, if you can draw your own dots between that story and this one, Rising Chinese ozone levels cause higher mortality. Oh, shit. Rising ozone pollution in China's cities has emerged as a major health risk, causing a rise in deaths from strokes and heart disease among vulnerable residents, according to a new study uh, from China. Data from 272 Chinese cities show, quote, robust evidence linking rising short-term ozone exposure with increased mortality from cardiovascular and heart disease as well as strokes. Uh, there you go. Uh, China is waging a war 
on pollution to reverse the environmental damage done by nearly four decades of untrammeled economic growth. Okay, and here's just just another day in China. Factory explosion in China kills dozens. An explosion that ripped through a motor wheels factory, like a car wheel factory uh, in eastern China has killed 71 people and injured one. 186. The accident at the Zhongrong Metal Products Plant, which makes aluminum wheels for automakers, including General Motors. Okay, from China to Vietnam. Vietnam jails activists for seven years over his toxic leak protest. A Vietnamese court on Monday jailed a blogger for seven years for disseminating anti-state propaganda, including articles he wrote which supported protest against a Taiwanese firm responsible for a toxic chemical leak. Uh, space for free expression is shrinking in the communist country with at least 15 activists and dissidents having now been arrested and several others jailed so far this year. This is Guyen Van Ho, age 22, an environmental activist, was accused of instigating protest against authorities via his Facebook account, mainly following the 2016 toxic leak at a steel factory operated by Taiwan's Formosa Corporation. Formosa was eventually fined $500 million after being blamed for dumping waste along Vietnam's central coast, which poisoned fish and decimated the income of fishing uh, communities. Uh, Ho was accused of taking part in the, pros in the protest. The indictment s said he had, quote, posted articles, videos, and images with negative content on his Facebook page while spreading reactionary propaganda against the party and state's policies. There you go. And this is just the latest in a long growing list of environmental activists being jailed or killed all over the planet. Yes, little dog, are you giving us some... Uh, some little Christmas elf porn here. Okay, two more. Let's head over to Iraq. Iraq to build new oil pipeline to Turkey. Oh, come on now. Oh, wait a minute. I'm wrong button. There we go. Iraq is to build a new pipeline to allow oil experts to resume from the northern province of Kirkuk to neighboring Turkey, the oil ministry said on Sunday. Uh, an older pipeline was too damaged by attacks to be rehabilitated. Iraq ha has exported 250,000 to 400,000 barrels per day through the pipeline. And so let's see, the new pipeline will actually, wow, be bigger and longer. And uh, wow, the oil minister said Iraq aims to double the output of Kirkuk oil fields to one million barrels per day after retaking the province from Kurdish forces 
in October if anybody does not know what an oil war is. But we're going to wind up in Lebanon with the latest news on the garbage crisis in Lebanon. Jeez. Uh, and they're, they're actually starting off at the bottom of the ocean off the coast of Lebanon where all of this shit is washing. This is uh, someone doing an under ocean uh, cleanup. Quote, what we saw down there, it makes your heart hurt. It's sad. It is our sea. There you go. But of course, where do you think the garbage at the bottom of the ocean is coming from? It's coming from the mountains of garbage on land. Uh, Lebanon's government has proved serially unable to address the country's rubbish crisis, which has reached catastrophic proportions. In 2015, when mountains of trash piled up in the streets of Beirut after the nation's largest dump closed down. Uh, so there was nowhere for to send the rubbish produced by the two million residents of Beirut and its environs. So no shit Sherlock that it's uh, that is ending up at the uh, bottom of the ocean. And to close this week's rant in Lebanon, and this is true for uh, how many other countries, Lebanon, just pick your country. Experts warn the garbage nightmare scenario could soon be repeated thanks to the government's continued failure to adopt any comprehensive waste management strategy even as the country continues to produce 6,000 tons of garbage every day. And with that, I am going to wrap up this week's uh, economic meltdown roundup rant. And me and the little Christmas elf are headed off to day four of to join the global industrial economy's Christmas tree sales to clueless morons during a national Christmas tree shortage. So maybe my job will end in, in a few days. You wouldn't believe uh, how few trees we already have left. Are you already taking your hat off? The little dog does not like his elf hat. Would you keep your elf hat on please like that? Bye guys. And as always, smoke them if you got them. We are so fucked. Okay, little elf.